Are you a team manager struggling to lead your team well? Have you been asked to lead HR, but it's your first time? Or are you an HR pro looking for your tribe? While We Were Working is the show for you. With quick tips and tough topics in 30 minutes or less, the Jumpstart HR team is here for you. So let's get into it. Hey, what's going on? And thank you for tuning in to this episode of While We Were Working. It's the show that helps you become a better leader of your small business or small team. Uh, we've got a different backdrop, different background setting. We are here in person for our team retreat. So I'm Joey, uh, host of the show and uh, CEO founder of Jumpstart HR. And as always, and now in the room, we've got Summer Keytron, our consulting practice manager and co-host of the show. Hey, Joey. So excited to be here. I think we picked a great time because the weather is absolutely beautiful. And uh, for those that haven't been out to Baltimore uh, and the D.C. area right now, there's just the most incredible cherry blossoms yep. just everywhere. It's yep. such a sight to see. Yeah. And that's one of the things I take for granted being here is uh, the cherry blossoms. But you you lived it up as a tourist uh, for, uh, for a little bit before we got into our meetings. I, I did. It, you know, it's always been uh, on my list of things to do to come out to D.C. and just see some of the sites that, you know, over the years, maybe have only mm-hmm. seen on TV or heard about or, you know, read about. So to see them in person, it, it's truly incredible. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, we, we've got a super fun show today. Uh, we're going to be talking about. When AI meets HR, so uh, everybody's talking about chat GPT, there's other AI tools, um, but we're going to talk about specifically when it shows up in the HR function. And um, do you really need an HR handbook, an employee handbook? And if so, uh, what are some of the do's and don'ts around building it with, uh, with a wizard? And so we've got a fun uh, episode. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go into uh, while we were working. And while we were working is the segment where we talk through a small business topic or challenge that you may not have been paying attention to. Why? Because you were busy working. And so, Summer, what's the article that we're covering today? Give us give us the rundown. Sure thing. So the article that we're going to talk about today was from uh, Inc. Magazine. It was an article published online titled when AI meets HR, and it was authored by Suzanne Lucas. You may know her. Uh, she does uh, a lot on LinkedIn, a lot of publishing as an evil HR lady, but I promise she's really not that evil. She has a lot of great things to say. And so this topic, uh, when AI meets HR, is really timely with ChatGPT being more widely utilized. So I thought it would be great for us to talk about today. Yeah, and you know, there's some conversation who knows when this when this airs and when you're listening to it the conversation around ai could radically change uh, we've already heard you know italy as a as a country mm-hmm. is banning chat gpt uh but who knows how things are going to be shaping up um when you're when you're hearing this so this is as it stands today as a recording <laughs> and so summer what are some of the things that stood out in the article to you Mm-hmm. Well, there's a couple of things, but the, the first part of the article is data privacy. So when you think about tools such as chat GPT, uh, because I think that's probably the one that most are probably familiar with today, you run the issues with some of your employees taking something that may be confidential information of the company or maybe one of your clients putting it into the search. And now that information becomes part of the data Mm -hmm. that that tool now has in their database. And so there is very much a concern about like, well, what's going to happen with that information? And do your employees even know that this is something that's a concern that they shouldn't be doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's such a, a new uh, minefield. I know when we kind of uh, came upon Chat GPT, it was, you know, uh, I was really excited about it, shared it with the team mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, you know, go go play with it. Go explore, you know, not necessarily do client stuff or anything like that, but get to know the tool. 
Um, but there are varying degrees of how people are leveraging this. Mm-hmm. Everything from, oh, I'm using it to send emails to uh, you can put code into it and mm-hmm. clean it up. So there's a, a wide range of how it's being utilized, mm-hmm. which also means there's a wide range of place to put like gates and guardrails. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing ab- about the article that stood out was a conversation around bias and error. Can, mm-hmm. you, can you give some insight onto that? Uh, I certainly can. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. But when we're talking about an AI tool, it can, especially like chat GPT, it can only produce for you what's been put in, Mm -hmm. right? And when these tools are being built, unfortunately, they are designed uh, by individuals. And so they, they do unfortunately have some aspect of bias. And I think we've talked about this before, specifically when it comes to recruiting tools and some of the concerns and harm with, you know, tools potentially screening out specific candidates that really shouldn't be screened out. Mm -hmm. And when you're utilizing a tool and it's having that sort of impact, then it's certainly not permitted (laughs) as part of your hiring practices. So you can't rely on a tool that may have, um, you know, bias or like specifically just errors. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause I mean, I know we're, we're kind of jumping the gun on, on this topic, but, uh, or at least I am, but you're responsible. You're responsible mm-hmm. for anything, any tool that you use, mm-hmm. that you roll out, uh, that you leverage to make decisions against. Mm-hmm. And so, um, even though you may not be legally the person who created the tool, mm-hmm. Uh, if it comes back and um, you you made an error or there's something wrong in your decision making process, mm-hmm. and you can uh, tie it back to ChatGPT, mm-hmm. then um, you're still left you're still left being responsible for that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a very very tough space to be for um, organizations that are eager to use this technology mm-hmm. uh, because. As much as you might be eager, you have to also be lockstep with the law. Mm-hmm. And I know one of our friends, uh, friend of the pod, friend of the company, just great friend, General great, uh, Kate Bischoff, she was um, interviewed on this uh, in this article. But you need to pay attention to what government's saying about about um AI. I know uh, President Biden is now having conversations with AI leaders about how how can these tools be used for good and evil. Um, you've probably seen the memes of um, our former president running through the streets. Uh, if you haven't seen those, go Google it. Uh, they're very interesting. But these are things that are generated by AI tools, and they're not real. And so there could be a whole host of issues that you find yourself getting in trouble with um, if you or someone in your team is utilizing them and and you get in trouble with it. So, Mm -hmm. Well, I think that leads leads us to uh, the obvious conversation, which is, you know, AI is not going away. I Mm -hmm. think in HR, as well as many other, uh, many other functions, there's definitely a place for it. But a lot of companies don't have a policy in place right now. Uh, So if you're utilizing AI or allowing your team members to and don't have a policy, now is the time to craft one so that you can start to put those guardrails around how your team members can and can't or should or shouldn't use this, uh, one, to protect the company, but also to make sure your team members aren't doing something that could get them in trouble. Yeah, and you know, um, we could turn this into a whole consultant's corner, um, but but I could just imagine a few areas you might want to button up your use of AI, and uh, that would be customer service. So if it's like responding to customers or crafting messages uh, on behalf of your company, um, it would be uh, policy creation, Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But Mm -hmm. uh, using tools. Uh, that may not have all of the right information that you need. Uh, so, so using um, using it for for your policies, uh, team communication. Um, just making sure that you're you're not utilizing it in a way that misses key details that people need to know. 
And um, I guess if there's another one I could think of, it would have to be probably marketing or branding or something. You're using these a tool to create words mm -hmm. to represent your brand and um, just don't use it in a way that can, that can get you in trouble. For sure. And I, I think some of the tips that I'd love to share uh, from my perspective are some of the items that Kate Bischoff actually mentioned in this article. Uh, and one of them is, you know, really just reminding us that the laws in regards to utilizing AI technology, specifically in hiring like we haven't seen these court cases come mm -hmm. through and we largely rely on court cases for guidance on uh, how, you know, how we should implement these into our business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely keeping an eye out for those court cases and using it to evaluate, you know, how we're currently using it is really important. But also, the big question is, how are your vendors using AI? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, because um, just because you're utilizing a vendor doesn't get you as the company off of the hook entirely. So, right, yeah. really important to know, like, yeah. you have to do your due diligence. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, a lot of companies I'm seeing now are starting to integrate AI in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to just make sure you're aware of how, you know, tools like Slack, I think Google Workplace just released, you know, that they've got an AI uh, tool mm -hmm. that will read and, and consolidate emails or help create Google slide presentations. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of folks are getting into this space, mm -hmm. even if you aren't personally choosing to get in this space. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned it, but I think it's worth mentioning again, as uh, you know, Kate, brought this up as well, is that you're ultimately responsible yep. as, you know, as the company for how this is being used. So I can't stress enough how important it is yeah. to really get your hands around this now and just ensure that your small business, your team members have that policy to refer to and yeah. that it's going to require updating, right? Because we're going to learn new things. Yeah over you know the next few months years yeah um, we want to make sure we stay on the right side <laughs> yeah yeah certainly and so uh, that's been our while we were working segment uh talking about ai tools um but when it comes to running a business uh we we still believe that people are the most important part of it and one of the things that we offer here at jumpstart uh is our disc assessment and coaching uh, actually, uh, looking through the glass door here at uh, Maria, our uh, our disc coach, uh, we've got a a team presentation that we're doing on Friday. Uh, so, if your business is in the uh, business of people and you have folks on your team that you would like to learn more about, you have folks that um, maybe have some uh, miscommunication issues or you are a new manager and you want to understand your team better, mm -hmm. what better way than to utilize our DISC services and get a snapshot of um, folks' motivations, energies, and how to connect best with one another. Um, we're offering them for a, a very uh, nice price, so go and check out the link in our show notes for how you can take advantage of our individual and uh, team assessments. Let's go ahead and jump into Consultant's Corner. Consultant's Corner, it's the good, the bad, the ugly, all things in between about things that we're seeing as consultants in this space. And uh, we've got a fun one because uh, it is, uh, the question came in, do I really need an employee handbook? And if so, what are your thoughts on using a wizard tool? So summer is a wizard tool, something that you just say abracadabra and you, you know, you got your handbook. Could you explain sort of uh, the premise behind this question? Sure thing. Well, I'll, I'll answer. It's, it's really a two-part question. So we've spoke about employee handbooks and how they are an absolute necessity for an organization. And I think we can chat a little bit you know, further uh, about like the whys, but when it comes to using a wizard tool, there there are a couple of solutions out there where you can you know pay uh, pay a fee and it'll ask you a variety of questions and voila mm -hmm. uh, you have your handbook and so while I think those are tempting, 
uh, I've unfortunately been on the receiving end where we've worked with a client and they, I ask them, okay, well, where, where'd you get your handbook? And they'll say, well, we used this wizard tool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen firsthand that it may say handbook on the cover, but the contents within are either not sufficient or they're just not accurate. Mm -hmm. So what good is it if your handbook isn't serving the purpose that it was designed and intended for? Yeah. Yeah. You've essentially just, you, you bought a lemon, right? You know, you think about the idea of um, using a wizard, but can a wizard really capture all of the ever-changing labor law? Mm -hmm. And um, you've got to ask yourself if you're using a wizard, well, when is the last time the wizard's been updated? Mm -hmm. Because if it hasn't been updated, shoot, since the time of this, of this recording of the show, uh, will there be a uh, AI policy, right, that right. you can incorporate and put into your into your handbook? Mm -hmm. So you've got to think about um, how you are um, creating your handbook. Mm -hmm. What tools are you using to make that happen? Um, what assurances you can get from your uh, handbook? Um, and it's it's hard to imagine that there's a tool that exists today that um, can give you true peace of mind, not only that complete, because I, I think I think you can cross the uh, you can check the box of a complete handbook, right? You know, maybe 50 policies, they're probably template or boilerplate and you have a complete one. Mm -hmm. But is it compliant? Mm -hmm. Is it is it custom to your organization mm -hmm. the way that you want to um, build it? And then, quite frankly, um, is it is it compliant from the standpoint of it'll hold up in court? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've seen horror stories of, and I have horror stories of people who uh, employers who present me documentation because they fired someone. It's unemployment at a time. They've got to justify why they made the, um, the separation, but they fired for a reason that's not in the handbook. And so uh, there's a huge exposure of the handbook not doing what it's supposed to do, and that's protect the company mm -hmm. and give employees rules of the road. Uh, I'm rambling, but I know you got some stuff to say. What do you want to say, Summer? No, I think those are great points because it really touches on, you know, answering the question of like, well, do I really even need a handbook? Mm -hmm. And we talk to clients all of the time who, you know, they'll come to us and say, well, you know, I've been in business for five years and we haven't had one. So I, I think we're okay without having one. But of course, you never have a problem until you have a problem, That's right. right? And so I think about it, it's more, uh, it's really more from a preventative standpoint. You know, we talk about fire prevention mm -hmm. versus firefighting and yep. which side do you want to be on? And so yep. I always think about it that way. But also from an employee standpoint, it's never a great feeling if you're an employee and you don't truly understand the rules, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you have employees who... They want to put forth the best effort to follow them, but they're unclear. Yeah. And so having that employee handbook really sets expectations and it helps team members know and employees know what's expected of them. Yeah. So I think going back to the wizard tool, I mean, there I have not seen one yet that I feel like really checks all of the boxes. I think you can... You can get a finished product, but each company is so unique. Mm -hmm. And not only from a compliance standpoint, which can become very complicated. I mean, when you're using a wizard, you do have to know a little bit about whether some of these laws apply to you, yeah. right? Based on your location, your company size. And I, I like to say they're really only as good as the tool mm -hmm. and the individual using them. So a great example is that. If um, I'm using a wizard tool, let's just say I don't have a lot of foundational knowledge and I'm just kind of answering the questions for face value. And one of them is, well, where do your employees work? Mm -hmm. And they're remote workers. And I'm thinking, well, they all work out of the main office, yeah. right? Because that's where I've assigned them. And I'm only selecting, give me the laws for my main office then my handbook's already non-compliant because I may not be aware mm -hmm. that those employees' work state is actually their home. Yep. And each state that they're working from needs to be included in the handbook too. 
Yeah. And, you know, we have our, our different pathways of how to do that, whether it's an appendix at the end or just creating an all-encompassing uh, handbook. Um, but I don't even think there's a, a wizard or a tool out there that will give you that flexibility mm-hmm. of um, how you craft um, your, your handbook. Okay. And I keep I want to keep going back to the word that you, you brought up, which is customization mm-hmm. um, and every business being unique. If you were to um, survey five business owners about, hey, what, what's important to you from a, um, a workplace culture standpoint, you're probably going to get five different answers. And so those five different companies need five different handbooks mm-hmm. because they value five different things. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, you know, as it stands today, when you're working with tools, it's, the tool's job is to get you to conform to their way mm-hmm. as opposed to allow you to be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess to say, I could say the same about some of our competitors out there, whether it be in the, the PEO space or uh, some, some other groups that, that, um, that we won't mention. But, but the whole premise of what we do and the whole premise of truly what I think is effective HR is HR that's the right HR function for the right business. And that's everything from your strategy to your tools like your handbook, mm-hmm. uh, customization, truly is a way to go if you want to have an organization that reflects your goals and values. Mm -hmm. I I think that's that's really sound advice. If there's any one thing that I've seen companies we've worked with on handbooks ask for lately, it is that customization. Mm -hmm. I think they really recognize the importance of an employee handbook, but also how it can add how it can enhance and help mm-hmm. support their culture that that they're building. And we've done some really fun handbooks. I yeah. mean, they don't have to all be like boring and and filled with legal jargon. I mean, yes, yeah. there are essentials that you you can't really get around having in them, but I, I think there's kind of that old school, like every handbook sounds like it's written by a lawyer. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. And, <laughs> and to, to that point, you know, there are a lot of businesses that think my handbook has to be done by a lawyer. And I think mm-hmm. that's an entirely different conversation, too. Listen, your handbook does not need to be done by a lawyer. You can trust that uh, an HR pro who knows the law, who knows your work environment, they are able to create a handbook. It's going to be way cheaper. It's going to be easier for your team to understand. Mm-hmm. It's going to be better for your team to adopt because uh, it's not going to have that, that legalese. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know I just like ruined a ton of uh, employment attorneys <laughs> business, but it's the truth. And we have to stop hiding behind that. Mm-hmm. You don't need a lawyer to make your employee handbook. Mm-hmm. I, I've actually had that conversation a couple of times because I think there is that common belief that mm-hmm. that's the only, like, where that's the right place to get it. Same with policies, yeah. right? And, and policies that you may use within your business outside of your handbook. And seasoned HR pros are going to be very familiar, especially consultants mm-hmm. that, that work at Jumpstart. I mean, we create so many of these for different companies and we, we really have them dialed in. Yeah. And so sometimes where that, kind of happy medium is like, okay, well, let us spend the time creating your handbook. And if you want to have it then reviewed by legal, that's a much better use of your time and money Mm -hmm. because writing it versus like reviewing and approving it, like two different time investments. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, Let's let's give some practical tips. If 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 you're not going to use a handbook, uh, wizard, because you've made it this far, you realize you shouldn't be <laughs> using one. Um, how do people contact us? Uh, what should what should people do? I think um, you start by just visiting our website, jumpstart hr.com. Uh, you can find us on social, uh, jumpstart hr. And, um, you know, you can email us at hello at jumpstart-hr.com to get you down the path of creating a, a really great handbook. Um, the way that we do it, there's two, there's two phases to it. Uh, you can say, hey, we've got a handbook. I think it's solid, but I just want you to review it. So, you know, that's, that's one service we offer. Then you might say, 
hey, we have a handbook. I'm not confident in it. Or we have a, we don't have a handbook and we need one. And we'll say, well, let's just start from scratch with our way because it's not going to have the legalese. You're going to be uh, ensured that it is compliant and it's going to uh, achieve the goals that you want. Uh, I'll do a fun story time real quick. So uh, a couple of years ago, we were working with this company uh, who is based in um, mid-, mid America. And they work in the uh, alcohol and beer and brewing space. And one thing that was important to the founder of this organization was he was like, "Hey, we don't want drug testing in our policy." Do you remember? You remember this book? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it was like you know we don't want drug testing to be a part of our uh, policies. And we said, "Okay, cool." Um, now, if you throw that in a wizard, it's probably going to say. Abort, abort, abort. <laughs> this does not compute. My brain is, is fried. But we said, okay, if you don't want to do drug testing, we still need to protect your business and we still need to give your colleagues the rules of the road. Mm-hmm. So we need to have something around um, impairment and making sure that you are um, not impaired in any way when you're doing your, uh, your duties and that you're not putting anyone in jeopardy uh, safety-wise. When uh, when doing your duties, and so that's just one kind of uh, custom creative story. Uh, but there are many others. There are many others out there. So if you want to be one of them, reach out to us. Um, you have any, any parting thoughts? No, I think that was a really great example because when I think about what we do, our customized approach, mm-hmm. and how a wizard really isn't going to get you close. I think that's a really great example of it's really having that conversation with our clients, genuinely understanding their needs and mm-hmm. what they're looking to accomplish, yep. where we can pull from our toolbox and say, okay, if you're not going to have this policy, there is still risk we need to manage, mm-hmm. but here's how we can accomplish it and make everybody happy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, at least if you're working with a with a, a consulting team like ours and we tell, you no, know, it's because we've exhausted all our options <laughs> before we got to that point. Um, so, you know, if, if we tell, you no know, and you do it anyway, um, you're probably going rogue. But, uh, you know, that's your that's your choice, too. Uh, so this has been a great episode here from the retreat. I uh, wish we could take you guys on the rest of the retreat but um you know we only got one booth at the uh, top call so you, you can't come along <laughs> but but until next time make sure you you follow us subscribe uh give us a five-star review on on apple Podcasts or wherever you consume your pods and uh, we'll have another fun and exciting episode next week awesome well thanks everybody for joining us i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next week all right see ya.